Hello YouTube and welcome to Heathen Hacks. I'm big. Ah! This is going to be the second part of my DIY 12,000 milliamp hour power bank which was supposed to be uploaded last week. Yeah, sorry about that. Today we are going to use a 474 rod super capacitor as a capacitive discharge spot welder and spot weld the batteries together because I don't have a dedicated spot welder at home. Also, I am a bit hesitant to use a soldering iron because that could potentially damage my batteries or diminish my battery's capacity because of the heat and nobody would want that. I would also reuse an old and broken power bank for the enclosure and add some more batteries to my current build to increase the charging capacity from 12,000 to 18,000 milliamps per hour. Let's go! So yeah, here is the first and most easiest to do version. Click here if you want to see how I made it. This is the old one. As you can see here, they literally have the same module. I mean, come on. Both of them have two USB ports for output, one input for charging the power bank and an LED for flashlight function. So we can actually just take out all of the parts that are inside this and replace those with the ones we have. Alright, let's open it up. We need to be careful and not use a metallic thing to open it though, because it might damage the batteries and potentially cause a short. So I'm going to use my prying tool instead. And there you go. See, the module inside this one even has the battery level indicator and button, and at the same exact place too. Well, it seems like the batteries are attached to it by some sort of adhesive. Not sure if it is glued to it, but I hope they just use tape. We need to remove the batteries carefully, because the case is a bit flimsy and it might break if we exert too much force. And yes, I'm using a metallic thing to remove the batteries, but I can see where it's hitting and I will easily see if there is a short. So yeah, alright, there's the first one. See, it's also spot welded. Again, we need to remove the batteries carefully to avoid shorts, especially when using a metallic object. We're also going to have a bad time if we accidentally puncture the batteries with it. Okay, I just scared myself a little, so I will put on my gloves and have my cheap Russian fire extinguisher nearby just in case. Don't worry, I have tried it already and it's working fine. That's the third, fourth, fifth, and finally the last one. Okay, let's see if our module will fit the case. Alright, perfect! Now we just need to remove the battery case that is attached to our module and add that to the enclosure. And then, put in the batteries. I've got like 6 pieces of it left. Also, before we throw our batteries away, we need to remove the wires that are connected to them and wrap them with something to further lessen the potential of shorting them before we put them inside a jar or a box or something for them to be protected and prevent them from heating up, burning something or even exploding because although the chance of it happening is quite low because they are basically dead, there is still a possibility of it happening. I will put them inside this empty plastic jar for dog vitamins. Alrighty then, here are the things that we need. A charging module of course, I will be using the one from my first power bank build. A DC to DC buck converter, we're going to use this one for charging the super capacitor. This one has an input voltage of 4 to 35 volts, adjustable output voltage of 1.25 to 30 volts, a 7 segment display for displaying the output voltage and an output current of 3 amps. A super capacitor for capacitive discharge spot welding. This is a Zhanghai 2.7 volts 474 rod super capacitor. 18650 batteries, a total of 6 pieces. A soldering iron and soldering lead. A 5 volt DC adapter for supplying the power to our buck converter. This has an output current of 3 amps. Some hookup wires for wiring stuff. A female DC barrel jack which will be connected to the buck converter, a double sided tape for the enclosure and a slotted or negative bit screwdriver for adjusting the potentiometer on our buck converter. A digital multimeter for monitoring the charge of our supercapacitor. Some alligator clips, we will connect these things to our supercapacitor and buck converter later for charging. A wire stripper, well for stripping wires of course. A tabbing wire for connecting the batteries. This is an 8mm by 0.1mm and is made of pure nickel. This is also the main reason why this video is late. And last but not the least, a slightly thick single core copper wire since I don't have a copper rod. I got this one from a THHN wire. 
So first, we need to check the capacity or charge left inside the supercapacitor. Okay, let's connect the probes of our multimeter. The ground terminal is already indicated here for us not to be confused. It currently has 0.35 volts of charge left out of 2.7. Here is what we are going to do before connecting the batteries. First, we're going to solder our thick solid core copper wires onto the positive and negative or ground terminals of the super cap. Then, charge it using our DC to DC buck converter. As you can see here, I have already connected the wires and female DC barrel jack to it which will be connected to this adapter that will serve as our power supply from the mains. Then, we will connect these alligator clips onto the output of the buck converter then onto the positive and negative or ground terminals of the super cap to charge it. Alright, let's proceed on unsleeving and cutting the thick wires that we need. After that, we need to make the wires a little bit pointy. As you can see here, I used a pretty low grit sandpaper to do it. It's a P120 to be exact. Alright, let's proceed on soldering. Turn on the extractor, there you go. Okay, on to the next terminal. Bend the wires a little bit. And we're done. Now, on to the charging phase. Let's get our buck converter and alligator clips. Here is the positive, here is the ground. These guys will go right here. Make sure that we have the correct polarity. There you go. And uh, connect our multimeter probes. Then connect our power supply. And there you go. It's already set on 2.7 volts. Now we just need to wait for it to finish charging. Cue the montage! Again, be sure to have something to prevent fires nearby, just in case we mess this up. Well, my main camera or my iPad ran out of space. So I'm using another mobile phone while transferring files. Alright, 2.55 volts. That's probably enough. Let's remove these things and proceed on welding. Alright, first are the positive terminals of the batteries. Okay, make sure the tubbing wire is centered. One, two, three. And now onto the ground terminals. Okay, there you go. Now let's check the current voltage of this using our multimeter. Okay, 4.03 volts. It's supposed to be 4.7 but it's fine. We're going to charge it later anyway. Alright, let's see if they will fit inside the enclosure. There you go. Now let's add some double-sided tape to hold the batteries inside the case. Alright, while the other one is transferring files again, I'm going to use my other mobile device. Then, solder the wires from our module onto the wire that is connected onto the battery terminals. Just like that. Now, let's check if it's all good. The battery level indicator says that it is apparently low on charge. But, let's just try it anyway. Okay, it's working! Now, let's try it with our USB tester connected. Currently outputting 0.8 amps. Alright, let's just uh, charge the batteries and do some tests again later. Okay, so as you can see here, it finally finished charging. Currently on full capacity as shown by the battery level indicator. Now I'm going to use this one again for testing. 
All right, so let's see. I'm going to put this one in here. This one here and this one here. Okay, it's charging at around 5 volts, 0.5 amps. Now, let's try this phone. Same charging rate. And then, let's try this tablet. Okay, 5 volts at 1.4 amps and on this port, just about 1 amp. So, we know now that our DIY power bank transplant is successful. Thanks for watching and see you again next week.